the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. There is a story of a little girl and her mom discussing the morning Sunday school class. The child told her mom that they talked about Jesus going up into heaven and that he is now sitting beside God. As they continued to look at the Sunday school paper, the mother noticed a picture of a rainbow. She said, look at that beautiful rainbow that God painted for us. The little girl replied, and just think, Mommy, God did all that with his left hand. The mother replied, what do you mean? Can't God use both his hands? And the little girl stated, of course not, Mom. My Sunday school teacher said that Jesus is sitting on his right hand. (laughs) To be a child once again. It seems that almost daily I receive humorous emails and stories and about funny things that children say and do. <clears throat> children say the most innocent things. They don't understand why moms and dads go to work. They don't understand why things cost money. They take for granted that when they are hungry, there will be food. They blindly trust in everyone and everything. They are not like adults. They don't understand puns and sarcasm, and yet every child wants to grow to be an adult where life is supposedly better. They are not like adults, however. Adults, on the other hand, do not understand innocence like children. They do not understand true trust like children do. They do not understand simple faith like children. In a sad way, adults are not like children and yet pine for their youth. Today is the National World Sunday of youth in our archdiocese. It is not only the day when we remember the youth of our church, but it is also the 40th day after Christmas, the day when Christ was brought in as a child into the temple to be blessed on the 40 days. I can't help but think about some 2,000 years ago when St. Simeon looked at this chi- tiny child being brought into the temple and knew immediately that it was the Christ. Simeon knew that although Christ was a tiny baby, he would grow into a man that would preach and teach, heal and forgive, offer salvation, die and rise again. Christ would grow into an adult, but one thing would never change. He would reach the age of 33, yet he would never outgrow one thing. One phrase that rings out in the life of Christ is an example for us is Matthew chapter 5, when Jesus says, Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Christ never outgrew the purity of a child's heart. There's a comic strip that I once read that said, With age comes wisdom. And then it goes on to say, It's just a shame that you have to give up so many other things along the way. Wisdom is good, but purity goes beyond the the worth of age and any worldly wisdom. Purity is not something that just happens. It is something that we were born with and that we unfortunately lose over time. Most people lose purity while on the road to growing up, while on that desperate quest to become an adult, that desperate quest to get a driver's license, to have a job, to have a home and all the things that we think about in this world. It was once written that teens now love luxury. They show disrespect for elders and love chatter in the place of exercise. Teenagers are tyrants, not the servants of their household. They no longer rise when their elders enter into the room. They contradict their parents, chatter before a company, gobble up dainties at the table, and cross their legs and tyrannize their teachers. This might be something that you think was written these past days, but this was written 400 years before the time of Christ by Socrates. It sounds like the woes that so many parents have that I talk to throughout the years who are raising teens. However, teens and adults alike need to return to one thing, They need to return to that purity of a small child. 
The church each day of our lives calls us to return to purity. As Christ reminds us, we must be like children in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. We must be pure. The sacraments of the church are the tools for purifying ourselves. However, we must return to a childlike disposition with God in order to receive what was once ours, to receive once again that purity that we were born with. We must embrace God in times of temptation, hurt, and lost. Just because, just like a child embraces its mother when its knee is skinned. We must trust God in times of uncertainty and doubt, like a child trusts that a parent will catch them when they fall. We must talk with God and with the saints from our hearts, sharing our joys and sorrows, just as a child shares the highs and lows of the day with all those who are in earshot of the child. We must turn back to God as the prodigal son did and know that God is waiting for us at the door for us to change our sinful ways. He waits for us at the door just like a child greets its parent at the door when they return from home, return from work at home at the end of a long day. We must have a softness of heart, not always looking to teach, but looking to learn even from the smallest of children. The lessons our children can learn from us is that we have not unlearned what it means to be honest. We have not unlearned what it means to be trusting, loving, appreciative, fair, faithful, understanding, simple, and most of all, pure. The best lesson that we have to follow is the example of Christ in our lives. And the best example that we can show our children is that although we have grown up, we have not grown out of purity of heart. There are so many things that we need to look at in our lives, so many things that distract us from this purity. As I have said to you in the past, to go home and look at your baptismal pictures of when you wore that white garment, think back to that day once again, to the purity that was in your soul, the purity that was shown by that white baptismal garment. And you will once again reveal, clean off yourselves and reveal that purity that resides within your heart and within your soul. Although Christ grew from a child, as we remember on this day, his 40th day, he grew into an adult. But that one thing that never changed, that one thing that he took with him from childhood to the crucifixion, to the resurrection and into the kingdom of heaven, that one thing is purity of heart. Show me a child and I will show you a teacher. Teach me to be a child at heart and I will see God as the Beatitudes have said. I will see God and I will live forever. Teach me to be pure. Amen.